Um, this first one I'm starting with is actually, I, I just started uh, submitting poetry for publication within the last year. Um, and my first poem is the first poem that I ever had published by someone else. <laughs> um, and it's titled, For My Birthday, I Went to Therapy. Or I gifted myself therapy. I'm sorry, Lex, I, I want to interrupt a second. Uh, other pic, someone else's picture has come up. So would everyone please make sure they're muted except for the presenter? Thank you. Thank you, Larry. All right, so this is for my birthday, I gifted myself therapy. I'm 28 now, can you believe it? I started seeing you when I was what, 22? You must have thought I was the saddest girl. One of the most human moments I have ever experienced was when I called you after he died and the first thing that crashed out of your mouth was how much can you take? Even you faltering for a moment to give perspective in tragedy. That's when I knew I could never have another therapist. You had been there through every detour by my side as I tried to pry my eye from the wreckage of the unsung wedding bells coaxing me to keep going when his death left me broken down and helping me to find my way after each unexpected turn. I have never told you this. I've never told anyone this, but I set a date. I was 23 when he died and it was exactly two months past his 25th birthday. So I decided that if by two months past my 25th birthday, every path forward was still roadblocked by grief, I would simply use my emergency exit and follow him in his pursuit of relief. But I wanted it to be a fair fight. So I bought a pair of roller skates on Craigslist and spent hours each week sweating out the sadness in hopes of getting on a roller derby team. Paid a man to pierce my back so I could fly, releasing one pain in favor of another, desperately seeking a different perspective and moved to the other side of the world to see what the grief would look like if no one knew I was grieving. And then my 25th birthday passed. And two months after my 25th birthday passed. I didn't even realize it until weeks later as another anxiety attack threatened to run me off the road that I thought to check the date. Six weeks had passed before I thought about it. Do you know what that's like to plan a route and get so distracted by the beauty in front of you that you completely miss your exit? Do you know what it's like to be living so well that you forgot you set a date to die? It wasn't that I was happy yet, but my roller derby team was counting on me. My tiny dogs were eager to lead me out the door, finding new paths to explore. And there was a beautiful girl whose laughter could fuel me for days. Now here I am sitting across from you and I just turned 28. I still can't believe I made it here. I think I want to get off the road and stretch my legs for a while, enjoy this little life I've made for myself. My family loves to tease me for claiming a whole week to celebrate my birthday, but each one feels like a surprise when it's one you never planned for. Each one seems worthy of celebration when the golden gift of the sunrise sparks you with curiosity for what the day may bring. Talk about progress, right? This is so weird. <laughs> this is my first virtual reading. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, all right. So as I mentioned before, I am in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, so while the rest of you are like dealing with snow and stuff, it's like beautiful and sunny outside and I'm in a tank top and it's glorious. <laughs> um, so I, the next piece that I am going to read is a little steamy. It's called The Night the Desert's Fever Broke. The blush of her cheek matched the cotton candy clouds as the sun painted the sky purple and red with his goodbye. We sipped on sweet summer wine, and for once I was grateful for the heat that hung heavy in the air. So I could point to that as the cause to my nervous sweat and maintain some sense of cool with her. Giggling through another night of the cicada serenade, we revealed the layers of ourselves and learned to put trust in one another. Under the cover of starlight, we could no longer deny the heat between us. Giving in to the season's spell, we shed our clothes and bloomed into the night like the serious flower. 
Despite the hundred degrees outside, there I was shivering beneath her touch, giving her permission to wander and explore. We quieted as a soft breeze sent summer on its way, and she settled into my arms as we marveled that our summer love was not just a fever dream. And with a breath, we gave way for the fall. All right. Thank you, thank you. I'm so, I see that some of you can't hear, so I'm gonna try and be a little louder, sorry. <laughs> um, so my next poem is the poem that was uh, published by Serotonin. Um, it's called The Kaleidoscope Says to My Anxiety. Unload your thoughts to me and I will teach you all about reframing. How a single turn of a memory can create a whole new picture using all the same colors. When you freeze with panic, sure that your message will again remain forever unread, I will remind you to remove the lens of the past so you can see the blood is, blood is not running red. It is merely the flowers from your new love blooming. Here in the present, life is still going. The tricky thing about the truth is it can be refracted in so many ways. The past, one of many facets, always trying to come into view. But if you just keep moving, I will remind you of what is yet to be seen. So used to reflecting only on your fears, I will bring you back, the present back into focus. Make sure every angle is witnessed, allowing you to see all the possibilities within them. <laughs> okay, um, I just have a couple more for you guys today. Um, I've been working on a new manuscript and that has been like what has kept me sane this quarantine. <laughs> um, as in my bio, I work in the mental health field and so that on top of COVID has been a lot. So it's been really great to build my online writing community since I've been uh, so removed from my local one. Um, but I do have a book that I self-published. Um, it's called The Afterlife. Um, I self-publish it through Amazon, but you can, it's um, on a couple of bookshop pages, so that way you can circumvent Amazon and not give them money. <laughs> um, but if you go to my Instagram or my Twitter, um, there's links to buy it through bookshop.org, or just send me a message and I can help you find it. Um, but this next one is uh, so another new one, and it's uh, called Your Hand in Mine. I listen to that old album and think of you. I hope you know the one I'm referring to. The one you played for me as the wind howled outside while the rain accompanied the drums on the window. The desert welcomed in the monsoon as you enveloped me in your arms, my heart beating as loud as the thunder. It took me the whole first song to quiet my breath and let myself sink into the moment enough to actually hear the music. How exhilarating it was to have your arms around me the first time. Not knowing then, but that by the, oh, excuse me, and not knowing then that near the end of us, I couldn't sleep if I wasn't touching you. Each night I'd cling to your arm as the melodies of our breathing intertwined, slowly releasing my grasp as we waltzed into a state of rest. Even in my dreams, I'd know if you rolled too far away and dance across the bed until I closed the foot of space between us. When you left, I didn't sleep for weeks. I spent the nights filling the silence in dance clubs, trying to distract my brain from looking for someone to blame. I didn't understand how I can be in so much pain when your only crime was not loving me anymore. The heart deafened my ability to reason trying to rewind to the exact moment you decided to walk away, questioning every kiss, tearing apart each memory to find when the dissonance grew between us. But every song comes to an end and there's no use in blaming the silence. The years it took me to learn that lesson, to see you not only as the first person who ever hurt me, but also as the first person who ever held me now I sleep soundly, taking up a whole king-size bed. And sometimes when the rain dances in the desert, I listen to that album we loved. And I'm not sad anymore. 
and I don't hate you. I just remember falling in love for the first time and very fondly wish you well. Thank you, thank you. All right, um, so I have one more for you guys. I'm really excited to hear everything that the rest of you guys have to share today. And thank you to Serotonin for inviting me out. Um, this last poem was actually, um, I wrote this poem during a class that I got to take with my favorite poet, Andrea Gibson, who was doing like an online class um, last fall. And I think they're getting ready to do another round of it. So if you are interested, definitely take it because it's so worth it. Um, <laughs> but so this uh, class, or excuse me, this poem is called My Own Secret Admirer. I will be there waiting for you when you finish the marathon of letting go of every past lover who was burned by your son instead of basking in your glow. I have always loved you, even when I couldn't admit it to myself. It was easier to listen to the world tell me all the ways you were unworthy and I'm ashamed to say sometimes I listen. But then you would surprise me by going out of your way to make small talk with the new girl or getting up to sing even though your nerves earthquake the room, yet you never missed a note. And I knew if I ever wanted to be able to call myself brave, I had to let myself love you. I've spent hours memorizing each of your scars like a roadmap to who you are, each one leading back to the steady compass of your heart, never afraid to guide the way. How I pray for the day it will point you back towards me and you can see all the love I have inside of me for you. You who strives to smile through every storm, I promise to love you with the patience to strain the salt from your tears, to grow a garden of sunflowers so you can always see the beauty in each hard lesson. Every time I catch the clock at 8.14, I will take a full moment, minute to celebrate the you that made it to this day. You tender dreamer who faces the darkness, always looking for the light. I collected the pieces from each time you felt yourself shatter and built you a telescope. So wherever you are, you can always get your wishes to the star. I want you to know no matter what you do, this love is already yours. It is not something you have to earn or suffer for. It simply is. And on the days when that doesn't seem true, I hope you remember to look in the mirror. I will be there waiting for you. Thank you guys. 